Okay, question one. How many ways can nine people line up? And if John, Jill, and James must sit next to each other, so we know that um, if we were to put these guys together, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then John, Jill, and James must sit next to each other. So we know that the other six can be arranged in six factorial ways. Uh, John, James, and Jill can move along seven positions. So that's one position they could sit, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we know that these three can be arranged in three factorial ways. So therefore, it's basically seven factorial times three factorial, which equals 3,240. Next question. How many ways can seven forces finish in a race first, second, and third? Well, it's fairly easy. This one is just 7P3. So basically, you do it by the formula. It's 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial. So it's 7 factorial over 4 factorial, which is just 7 times 6 times 5 which equals 42 times 5, which equals 210. Question 3. How many ways can I select three hearts from a standard pack of 52 cards? Well, we know there's 13 hearts. in a pack and we're choosing three and we're choosing any three so basically it's 13 choose three which equals 364 question four how many ways are to arrange the letters in the word meander well meander has seven letters Seven letters in the word. And if you look at it, we've got two, uh, two E's. And that's it, right? So the answer is going to be seven factorial divided by two factorial, which is going to be seven times six times five times four times three. Uh, which is, I'm not sure, I'm going to work it out, it is 5040. Zero, zero. And question five, how many ways can I select a, a committee consisting of two women uh, and two men from a pool of five men and six women? So you've got a pool of five men, and you're going to choose two and then a pool of six women and choose two. So this is the men, this is the women. Five choose two is 10, six choose two is 15, therefore we get 150. Question six here, last question on this page. A uh, bag containing three red, so let's just write this out, we've got red 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 we've got three yellow so yellow 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 and we've got three green so green 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 find the probability of selecting two different colored discs without replacement so basically what's the probability of getting red well we know that probability of getting red is going to be three over nine probability of getting yellow is the same three over nine and green is going to be three over nine when we don't replace the first one then it goes back to this eight discs. So therefore the probability of red red is going to be three over nine for the first disc and then times two over eight for the second. So basically six over 72. Now bizarrely enough, it's the same for each one, isn't it? Yellow yellow is going to be three over nine for the first one. Now there's two yellows and eight altogether. So six over 72. And then the probability of green green get the pen right, is going to be 3 over 9, 
and 2 over 8. Now the exam won't have such nice numbers because they'll be different colored, different numbered for each letter. For some reason I made everything 3, 3 and 3. So you add these together and that means the probability of the same color is going to be 6 over 72 plus 6 over 72 plus 6 over 72 which is 18 over 72 so therefore the different color, the probability of different color, which is what the question is asking for, is going to be 1 minus that. And 1 minus 7, 18 over 72 is 54 over 72, which I think reduces to 3 over 4. So question 7, find the probability of selecting a heart from a pack of cards and then a spade. So we know the probability of... A heart. We know there's 13 hearts, so it's going to be 13 choose one, and we know there's 52 cards in a pack, so 13 over 52, which is actually 1 over 4. And then probability of selecting a spade second, no replacement. We know there's 13 spades left, and we're going to choose one. But with this 51 cards left, so 51 choose one. So that's actually 13 over 51. So the probability of choosing a heart and then a spade is going to be 1 over 4 times 13 over 51. And this is 13 over 204. And that equals as a decimal. 0 0.0637, so 0 0.0637, which equals 6.37%, 6.4%. Okay, next question. Um, find the probability of rolling two dice and getting a sum of eight. Well, this should be fairly easy. We know that eight could be a 2 and 6, a 6 and 2, a 3 and 5, a 5 and 3, or 4 and 4. So basically the probability of sum of 8, I'm not sure what I'm doing there, sorry about that, of 8 is going to be 5 of them. There's 5 chances out of 36 altogether. All right, that's that question. Number 9. Shipment of 10 microwaves consists of four of them being defective. So that means we've got six good ones and then five bad ones or defective ones. And the question says, find the probability of selecting four altogether and one being defective. So there's the defective ones. We've got four of them. We're going to choose one. And that means the other three that we choose come from the good ones. So six choose three. 6 choose 3 is 20, and 4 choose 1 is 4, so we get the answer 80. Question 9, oh, sorry, question 10. Let's get rid of that one, don't want that one, do we? There you go, question 10. Let's see what we've got. We've got find the probability of getting two aces in a hand of poker. So this is question 10. So the probability of two aces. So we know that we've got four aces and we want any two of them. That means there's 48 cards left to choose the other three. And poker has five cards, 52 choose five. And that answer is, so 3.99%, so it's basically 0.0399 which equals 3.99%. Question 11. Find the probability of nine people lining up for a photo. Jill, Bill and John are not sat next to each other. So I think we've done this already, but the other way around. So the probability of not sitting next to each other next to each other is equal to 1 minus the probability of sitting next to each other. So what we're going to do is work out the probability of sitting next. 
and we'll subtract that from 1. So the, the previous question was combinations, now this is a probability. So again, we've got nine people lined up, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then Jim, Bill, and John. So we've got this six can line up in six factorial ways. These three can sit in seven positions along the line, so that's times seven, and then these three can actually rearrange themselves in three factorial ways, divided by the number of ways that nine people can be rearranged. Well, that's nine factorial. So we work out this first, which is 0 0.0833. And then if we subtract that, therefore, the probability of not next to each other will be 1 minus that, which is 0 0.916, or 91.6. You want to write that for? 91.7%, I think it is. All right, good news. And then the last question in this section here is, there are six cats and five dogs in a pet shop. Five pets are chosen at random for a visit to a children's hospital. Find the probability at least two at least two dogs are chosen. Ooh, tricky question. So we want to find at least two dogs. Could be the probability of two dogs, the probability of three dogs, the probability of four dogs, and the probability of five. That is a lot to work out. And so that's not quite very good. So what we might want to do is find the probability of one dog and the probability of zero dogs, because that's going to be less, and we're going to subtract that from one. So the probability of one dog being selected of the five is going to be there's five dogs, so five, choose one. And we're choosing four pets, that means six cats choose four. And of course, we've got 11 animals altogether, and we're choosing five. So that would be the probability of one dog. And the probability of no dogs would be five choose zero because we've got five dogs, we don't want to choose any of them. That means the other five pets must be cats, so six choose five, and then divided by 11 choose five. So the probability of at least two dogs is going to be the one minus the probability of less than two which is going to be 1 minus the probability of 1 dog minus the probability of 0 dogs. So all we've got to do is work out these two values up here and then put them into that equation. So the probability of a 1 is going to be 0 0.16, 162. Probability of 0 is 0 0.0129, so we'll say 0 0.013. And therefore, the final answer is going to be subtract those from 1 is equal to 0.825, so basically 82.5%. Okay, so next question here, question 13. It says... Approximately 8% of tomato seeds do not germinate the packets sold in the shop. If you buy a packet with 36 seeds, then find the probability of exactly three seeds not germinating. It gives you the idea of using a binomial. So therefore, the probability of exactly three seeds not germinating. Okay, so we've got uh, 36 altogether. So it's going to be 36 choose three. And we know that the non-germinators, well, this is going to be our success, is going to be to the power 3, and therefore 0.92 to the power 33. Remember that these two powers, 3 and 33, will add up to 36, and that this number here, the 3, will be the same as the 3 there. All right, so therefore our answer is going to be and if you put it in the mincer, you get 0.233, which equals 23.3%. Excellent news. 
Question 14, find the median. So we've got 19 numbers. So we do 19 plus 1 divided by 2, that's 20. So we're looking for the tenth number. So we count along 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So median equals 24. Okay, next question. Find the interquartile range. And we've got 15 numbers, so we know that. Uh, this is question 15. We've got 15 plus 1 divided by 2 is the eighth number, is the median. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is the halfway point. So 24 is the median. We're not asked to find that, but look at the numbers to the left. And how many numbers have we got? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So therefore the middle one's going to be 22 of those seven numbers there. So 22 is the interquartile range 1. And we go the other way. And we've got seven numbers, of course, again. And the middle number is going to be 28, IQR 3. So therefore, interquartile range equals 28 minus 22 which equals 6. Question 16, find the range. This should be straightforward. So the range equals max minus min, which is going to be 36 minus 16, which is 20. I don't think you're going to find an easier question than that on the exam. Okay, this one, find the rank that best fits for the 45th percentile of the numbers, which I haven't, we haven't got the numbers in there. Oh my goodness, what's happened there? We've lost the numbers for the 18 numbers listed below. Well, okay, so we got a freebie there. We don't need to do that one. Okay, question 18. So find the percentile for the number 21. Well, 21 is there. So we know that the formula says P equals 100 L plus 0.5 E over N. So we got 100. We know that L is the number of numbers before that number. So L is this, how many numbers there? It's 5 plus 0.5 times E. E is the number of times 21 repeats. Well, it only repeats once. So therefore, E is 1. And then divide by that by the number of numbers, which is 21. And the answer is, and we get 26.19. So what we do, we round down here, and it's the 26th percentile is your answer. Okay, normal distribution has a mean of 21. So it's basically just substituting into the formula here. It should be fairly straightforward. We know that Z equals the data point minus the mean over the standard deviation. And it tells us that the mean is 21. Uh, standard deviation is 5, so we're going to divide by 5. And we're going to find the Z point for 22.5 being our data point. So Z equals 22.5 minus 21 is 1.5. 1.5 divided by 5 is um, 0.3, I think it is. So therefore, we'd have a Z score of 0 0.3. Next question. Uh, normal distribution, so it's the same formula again. We've got about three or four questions on the same stuff, just trying to find different parts of the formula. Normal distribution has a mean of 54, so we've got minus 54. A standard deviation of 5 again. A data point for a score of 1.23, so the z score is that, 
and that's what we've got. So we're going to multiply across here. 5 times 1.23 is 6.15, I think it is, equals x minus 54. Take the 54 over and add it, and we get that x equals 60.15. That's your answer. And 21, same thing. Uh, Z equals X minus X mean over standard deviation. Normal div distribution has a standard deviation of 4. Um, find the mean. So we've got to find the mean. If a data point of 45 has a negative 1.5 as the Z score. So again, substitution. Multiply across here, we get negative 6 equals 45 minus the mean, and therefore the mean will be 45 plus 6, which equals 51. All right, good question. Okay, 29.81% of students score above 84%. So we look at the normal distribution. We've got that... 84% is a data point there, and we know the mean is 81, and we know that to the right is 29.81% of students. So that means to the left in here, let's put a different color, in here is going to be 100 minus that, which is equal to 0 0.0, uh, to put it into nice color, 0, 0.0, uh, what's that going to be? 7,01, sorry about that, 7,019. So we're looking for 0 0.0719 in the middle of our chart. And if you look very closely, it will be right there. There it is, 0 0.0719. Perfect. So that means 0 0.53. So 0.53 is our z-score. All right, and that fits into our formula. So we know that 0.53 equals the data point, 84, minus the mean over the standard deviation, and these two switch places, so the standard deviation equals 84 minus 81, which we know is 3, divided by 0.53 equals uh, 5.66 is our standard deviation. Question at the bottom here. It says a basketball player shoots... Uh, Three points with an average of 0.39. If he takes warm-up shots from the three-point line, what is the probability? What is the probability that his first made three-pointer will be his first third attempt? So the probability, basically, of two misses and then hit. That's what. So his first made attempt is on his third attempt. So we know the probability of a miss is going to be 61%, which is 0.61, because we took 39% and subtracted from 100. The probability of a hit is 39%, which equals 0.39. So therefore, the probability of two misses first is going to be 0.61 squared times 0.39. This is the probability of having two misses followed by the third one being a score. And the answer is 14.5% is 0 0.145, which we know is 14.5%. So last couple of questions here. We know that the probability you walk to school is 0 0.4. That's that one there. And is probability of being late is 0 0.7. If I cycle, then the probability I'm late decreases to 0.15. So basically, the probability of him cycling is going to be 0.6 because these two must add up to 1. But if I cycle, my probability of being late is 1.5, and the probability of being on time there is 0.85.
The one we've got missing is the probability of being on time if I walk, which is going to be 0.3, because these two add up to 1. The question says, find the overall probability I'm late on any given day. So late could be I walk and I'm late. So we've got to work out that one first, and that's going to be 0 0.4 times 0 0.7, and that would be late. And the other way I can be late is by cycling and being late there. So that is going to be 0 0.6 times 0.15. And the probability I'm late on any one day is going to be those two added up. Is going to be 0 0.4 times 0 0.7. That's if I walk. Plus... 0.6 times 0.15, and that's if I cycle. So 0.4 times 0.7 is 0.28. 0 0.6 times 0.15 is 0.09. If I add them to it together, I get 0.37, which is 37% chance of being late on any one given day. Last question. Question says, group of students were asked their favorite subject. The results were listed below. Find the probability that a student who preferred physics. So if I prefer physics, that means I'm in this group here. So I, I'm in one of these 40, I'm one of the 45 students that like physics. Find the probability a student preferred physics was also female. So what's the probability that I'm actually one of those 31? And, of course, the probability there is conditional. So it's the probability, it's, uh, what number is this, 25, sorry. So it's the probability of being female, given that you study physics. So it's going to be female is 31 out of the 45 people that study physics. And the answer there is 0 0.068 and therefore we'd say 68.9% um, chance of being female given that they study physics. All right, and that's it. Great job. Thank you very much.